This tastes funny. And is that is that glue on the rim? Mmm. Uh, yeah, cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lira Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face, for your face on a Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Friday, the 19th of April, 2024. And look, you know, you take a few days off to go. This water really does taste weird. Um, I, I got a cruise news story about that. I'll, I'll tell you about it. You're not going to believe what this, what's, like, um, two more sea days here's here's what it looks like out in my cabin today two more sea days and then back to reality uh snap back to reality oops there goes gravity shout out ludicrous um but the cruise news marches on it, it does not wait for my cruise to end so let's get caught up on some of the biggest stories going on in cruising right now cruise news story number one an update a sad update coming from cozumel mexico where the search for a missing South Carolinian cruiser has turned from a search for to find the person to a recovery of the body. It's been since April the 3rd since Edmund Bradley Solomon III went missing in Cozumel. 66-year-old gentleman with partial dementia wandered off from the cruise port area there in Cozumel not to be seen again. They've been searching all this time, local authorities, the family, and just recently it's been determined that they don't think that he will be found alive, and the family has actually left Cozumel. So uh, still, after all this time, uh, close to three weeks, nobody knows where this gentleman is, and um, yeah, a sad continuation to that story because it won't be an ending until brad is found i don't know if you guys are like me but i used to you know when my kids were little i would try to avoid watching television programs about uh kids going missing because you start to think about that in the context of your own life and so i, I think about even in this story could you imagine if one of your loved ones was unaccounted for and just out there somewhere my, my heart breaks for that family uh, not not the not the continuation or the end of that story that we want at all. Uh, lots more cruise news to process through, but before we get there, I'd like to take a moment to highlight the sponsor of today's episode. Today's episode is sponsored by Private Internet Access. All of us use the internet, and many of us inadvertently expose our private data to hackers, identity thieves, and bad actors who would do us harm. Just like you wouldn't leave your wallet full of cash unprotected, likewise, you would not leave your private internet data out in the open either. A VPN or virtual private network uses encryption technology to hide your private internet data from prying eyes, and private internet access is a top-rated VPN provider working to keep your data safe. In addition to protecting your data, PIA VPN also helps you navigate around geofences. You can use PIA VPN to access websites in foreign locations, to expand your Netflix catalog, or to connect to services back home when traveling abroad. For example, I recently wanted to watch The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, you know, that great Daniel Craig flick, well, they don't have it. It's not available in the U.S., but it is available in the U.K. and in Japan. Well, with PIA VPN, I can connect to a server in one of those countries and watch that movie. PIA VPN is the world's most transparent VPN provider. They never record or store your data. They offer 24 by 7 support, and they allow you to try the service risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. One of the big reasons that I like using PIA VPN is they cover all of your devices for one low price. They have support for Windows and Android and iOS and uh, Mac OS. And well, excitingly, you can try PIA VPN for a discounted price by visiting www.piavpn forward slash Lalita Loca or clicking the link in the description you will get 83% off of private internet access. Doing the math on that, that's just $2.03 a month, and you get four extra months of PIA VPN for free. 
Big thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring today's episode. Cruise news story number two is the story that broke last week about a mom who went on a cruise without her children. Who who doesn't love a kid's free vacay? However, uh, it, she seems to be in trouble because instead of you know appropriately getting somebody to take care of the children while she was gone. She, she just, she just left them, allegedly. We're talking about 29 year old Lakeisha Wood Williams, who was arrested after she returned from her cruise in Texas. She's had a day in court where she was held over with a $25,000 bond accused of neglecting her children, leaving them at home. For her part, she says it's all a big mistake that she hired a family member to watch her kids which that didn't happen. And then there's this whole aspect of the case where she was somewhat watching the kids over the internet from the cruise ship because they have a camera in the house. And um, as sad and, and crazy as that is, it, it immediately sparked in my mind, like, is that a business opportunity? Could we do that? Like, hey, set up a camera in your house and while you're out on the Lido deck, you know, sip and rum punch, we'll watch your kids. I think she would still be in trouble. Again, she made mistakes. I think the biggest mistake is she didn't leave under cover of night. The way she got busted is she left the house with her luggage and not her kids, and the neighbor saw, and they, they called it in. Way to go, neighbors. I don't know, this is a horrible story. Like, this is not good parenting. Um, how, how do you kind of think somebody, like, you shouldn't leave the house until the person watching your kids is gonna be there watching, I don't know. We'll continue to watch to see how this how this plays out. Oh yeah, the kids, they're just six and eight years old. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's bad. That's bad parenting right there. Bad parenting. Tastes like glue. Mm. Mm. Uh, cruise news story number three. Uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. There is a video that's blowing up on TikTok now. Uh, this video right here blowing up because it's it's one of them cruise hacks. It's got that famous uh, nobody's going to know music behind it that they play on TikTok. Nobody's going to know. And essentially the woman in the video is saying instead of paying the, uh, what is this? four dollars and fifty cents for the carnival water they put two of these in your cabin i only have this much left because i i use them um instead of paying the 450 just drink the water like i'm doing but then at the end of the consumption just go into the bathroom there and fill the water back up with sink water the bottle back up with sink water and then use a little glue to affix the top and then whammo bammo you just put it back on there and nobody is the wiser that you've consumed the water you saved yourself four dollars and fifty cents um now as you can imagine this video is getting rocked getting rocked with uh, some hateful comments people saying that she should be banned for doing this and i think if she is doing this she should be banned now she's come out and said since then like this is just a parody this is just a joke and as someone who likes to crack funny every once in a while i do understand the idea that sometimes your jokes can be misconstrued but then you wonder, are there some things that maybe you shouldn't joke about and possibly, um, you know, stealing water in that fashion might be something, you know, that you don't want to joke about. Uh, surely she's not doing this. I mean, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to hope that this is a joke because, again, it's such a minimal thing. I, I can't imagine that you would do this. Uh, this doesn't taste like glue. I guess I should say that that was that whole, the whole bit like this tastes weird. This is fine. So don't freak out anybody. Um, I don't know if she is doing this. Do you think that warrants a lifetime ban? I don't know how she would get caught. And uh, how does it make you feel about water now? I tell you what, after I heard the story, I was looking like, is there glue drops at the top of this water? Now, I got to tell you about this interesting conversation about public discipline on Carnival Cruise Line. I, I don't know how I feel about this either. I guess I'm so far removed maybe from this circumstance. I'm, I feel away. But uh, before I do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Uh, look, uh, I've had a great time here in the Southern Caribbean. 
If you want to see what the cruise ports are of Curacao and Aruba, Barbados, Antigua, uh, tomorrow there'll be a video out on St. Martin. If you've had any desire to go to these places and see what it's like. I did excursions in a few of those locations. I did a lot of port explorations. I even made it to a beach in uh, St. Martin for those that are wanting to see a beach. So. Uh, I'll leave all those videos linked in the description. Make sure you check those out. Uh, and uh, thank you guys for letting me take a little vacation from the news and explore the ports. I appreciate it. And I'm glad you guys are here to watch the news. And now let's go to one of our favorite places. Let's go to the Facebook page of Carnival Brand Ambassador John Heald, where uh, somebody wrote him about people publicly disciplining their children and upset upset that no crew member did anything about it let me let me read it so i don't get it twisted message asking what carnival's policy is on allowing parents to smack their children i'm sorry that's funny i love the language to smack their children in in full view of the rest of us eating dinner in the restaurant on the carnival mardi gras Last week, myself and my partner were enjoying dinner in the Italian restaurant. We witnessed a mom slap the back of her children's leg three times. He could not have been much older than six or seven years old. The crew serving us did nothing to stop her. I know you are old, John Heald. I know before I even read any reply you give me that it will probably include words such as, I was slapped as a child uh, because this was acceptable in previous decades. It certainly is not acceptable now, not in America and not in public view. The thing that stands out clearly to me was that this mom hit her child out of frustration or anger. Hitting a child isn't about administration of justice. Normally, it's nothing more than venting carnival's crew should have stopped it and asked the parents to leave the restaurant at the very least they should have called security to do it why was nothing done john i'm going to give some commentary on this but let me tell you essentially what john healed said basically he's saying that this is between the parent and the child he does agree with her that certainly when he grew up he you know was disciplined that way but the main point that he's making at least from the carnival perspective is that the crew members are not going to step in when somebody is disciplining their child i would say in a normal way that discipline is meted out you know a spanking on the back of the legs i think that qualifies as normal i assume that if somebody was punching a child that maybe somebody would step in at that point. I, I would assume that that's a, an assumption on my part, but I'm, you know, what I'm gathering from this is that discipline met it out in the standard, normal discipline way. Nobody's stepping in for that. That's between the parent and the child. I, I don't know. So like I've, I've certainly uh, disciplined my children in that way in my life, not frequently. And there came a time when they were pretty young where I thought this maybe not, this isn't the way I want to discipline my children. And I stopped doing that. What I really found was that more effective than physical discipline was just uh, removing my affection from them or uh, crushing their self-esteem, uh, making them feel really uncertain about themselves. A heavy dose of guilt seemed like all of that stuff would get the compliant. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't do any of that stuff to your kids. And look, public or private, I'm not super comfortable seeing a kid get yelled at harshly or disciplined uh, it, it does make me feel a certain way but as far as I know physical spanking in that way I don't think it's illegal maybe it's illegal in some places I, again I haven't kept up with it what do you what do you think would you feel weird if you saw a child getting spanked in the main dining room or just anywhere in general do you, do, you know has spanking gone away I, again I'm way out of touch on this thing uh, young parents out there, what's what's the latest and greatest in the parenting? I, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I do know this. Um, I, I think I would like you to spank my like button. It, it, spank that like button right now. It would bring us all great pleasure. I'll say thanks for that. Thank you for watching the show. Thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring the show. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. This is Tony for Ludley DeLoca from the Carnival Pride. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise.